Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in France yesterday following an invitation from the French President Emmanuel Macron, with whom His Majesty will discuss the cordial relations that connect the two countries and peoples, as well as the latest developments in the region and around the world. Among those who received His Majesty were senior officials from the French government, as well as the Bahraini ambassador to France, along with members of the Bahraini embassy in Paris. His Majesty made a statement in which he expressed gratitude to President Macron for his invitation and expressed appreciation for the long history and rich culture of the French Republic. His Majesty also expressed pride in the strong relations that connect the two countries and peoples and said that the French people share with the people of Bahrain an excellent taste and an innovative and tolerant spirit. His Majesty expressed keenness on further developing relations with France and that Bahrain French relations in all aspects represent a model to be emulated by others as they are based on mutual respect, cooperation, common interests and a shared political, economic and cultural history. His Majesty said that the visit to France to meet President Macron is an opportunity to deepen the bilateral ties and to share perspectives on matters of mutual interest in the region and to discuss the best ways in which common challenges can be countered, especially because they represent a threat to all of the world's countries. The Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of France have long held a strong bond with a historical relationship founded between the diplomats of the two countries in 1972. The two nations established an ideal model of international relations which has spread over decades and has grown to include all areas of cooperation. Bahrain appreciates the, I would say the continuity and the consistency of French foreign policy. This has been uh, underlined many times by my counterparts uh, in, uh, within Bahraini authorities. France has never, um, never made big curves in its foreign policy in the region. And I know that Arab people, in particular Gulf people, in particular Bahraini people, are extremely grateful and uh, aware of this um, consistency even when it's not easy to hold. I think there are more than one common uh, value shared by Bahraini and French people. The spirit of um, tolerance and um, equal opportunities, the spirit of um, parity between men and women, which is uh, also uh, highly praised in my country, uh, a sense of humor, if you allow me, this is not often said, but I could uh, observe it. Um, a certain uh, love of good things, a love of good things, love of education. Bahraini French relations have reached an advanced level of coordination and cooperation made possible by their common interests and shared desires. Let me rather put the label, the tag cooperation in the front page uh, is probably the most visible part of France prisons in Bahrain because this encompasses the sectors of language, of university cooperation, of governance, of cultural events. All these activities manifold very large spectrum of cooperation sectors which show the, let's call it influence, the soft power, the sharing of uh, our, the mixed and cross-fertilization of our culture between France and Bahrain. Uh, I would like to stress 
uh, on that occasion, the excellent dialogue that we have here, the embassy, together with the Bahraini authorities, be it the Bahraini Authority for Culture and uh, Antiquities, or the manifold universities, beginning with UOB, RUW, AGU, Ahlia, we have cooperation with all of them. We uh, particularly have a, a strong link with the Centre d'études des langues françaises, embedded within UOB, because this is the very cradle of education for to, to teach Bahraini students to become French teachers. I have to say that one of the, our priorities in partnership with the local authorities is to boost teaching of French language. And we are extremely aware of the strong desire of His Majesty, His Majesty himself to encourage, to enhance trilingualism in Bahrain. His Majesty wants, as we do want, to bet on education, on excellency, on uh, maximum employability of the many talented Bahraini youth who need to have all assets on their resume, on their journey to become the stakeholders of the uh, development and uh, a future, a uh, brilliant future of Bahrain for tomorrow. We want to be part of that. The highly anticipated and long-awaited visit by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to Paris is a golden opportunity to further boost relations and widen cooperation between the two countries. It's happening for the first time with His Majesty, for the first time with President Macron, so we can say it's always the first time, in a sense, because um, it's such a big work to, pre to prepare. Uh, the topics evolve. Uh, so. What I can tell you about this visit is that it's uh, eagerly expected from both sides. One of the reasons being that it was postponed last year and uh, we never stopped to keep it in our mind. Every, every effort, every achievement, every step forward that we have been doing over the past year was geared towards the tentative forthcoming King's visit. To France. His Majesty, who paid his last official visit in 2012, has since then uh, been to France a couple of times. Every time he was hosted, as far as I know, by not hosted but uh, welcomed at least by uh, President de la République, and uh, the visit he is paying now uh, is the normal and logical follow up. And uh, I can tell you, not long after his entry into uh, exercise, President Macron has wished this visit to take place. We are so happy that it is taking place. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received yesterday in Paris a number of French businessmen during his visit to France. His Majesty the King welcomed the French businessmen, hailing the deep-rooted and historical relations between the two countries. Then His Majesty the King delivered the following speech. Ladies and gentlemen, بمساهماتهم ونشاطاتهم الاقتصادية في البحرين ونتطلع أن تسهم مثل هذه اللقاءات في تنويع وتنشيط آفاق التعاون بين بلدينا وخصوصا في مجال الطاقة والنقل والاستثمار الثقافي والتعليمي والسياحي كما نجد في مثل هذه اللقاءات القيمة فرصة إضافية لنتبادل فيها الأفكار والخبرات لمستقبل علاقاتنا الثنائية ولقد كان للحادث المروع الذي تعرضت له كاتدرائية نوتردام 
تأثير كبير على نفوسنا جميعا في البحرين وأنقل لكم بدوري أسفنا الشديد وتمنياتنا الصادقة بعودة سريعة لهذا الرمز التاريخي بمكانته الدينية كمعلم من ضمن المعالم العريقة لفرنسا ويأتي اهتمام أهل البحرين بهذا الصرح المقدس من منطلق رعايتهم واحترامهم لجور العبادة من مختلف الأديان والمعتقدات التي تستضيفها بلادنا بكل تسامح واحترام وتمتعت خلالها بحريتها التامة في ممارسة شعائرها الدينية وبدعم كامل من مجتمعنا بأفراده ومؤسساته المختلفة وأن اجتماعنا معكم اليوم هو لندعوكم جميعا لزيارة البحرين لرؤية هذه الخصوصية البحرينية التي نعتز بها كموطن للتعايش السلمي بين الأديان والثقافات وأن تكون زيارتكم فرصة أخرى لمتابعة ما ستنتج عن هذه الزيارة من اتفاقات مبدئية والاطلاع كذلك على مظاهر التنمية البشرية والاقتصادية ومعالمنا الثقافية والتاريخية ولما نحمله من تقدير وترحاب لجميع من يزور بلادنا من أخوة وأصدقاء شكرا لكم مرة أخرى على حضوركم كريم مع تمنياتنا لهذا اللقاء بنتائج طيبة ومثمرة شكرا For their part, the French businessman hailed the efforts of His Majesty the King in bolstering Bahraini-French relations and developing the fields of commercial, economic and investment cooperation. The continuous visits between the leaders and officials of the two countries reflect the strength of the relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of France, which is more than four decades old. It's complicated to anticipate now what the uh, outcome and short, middle and long term results of the visit will be. Uh, I would say better knowledge, reciprocal knowledge. I would say a new boost given to these issues which were a little bit uh, stalled and that have been resumed and launched thanks to the catalyst effect of the visit. I would say new friendship. Uh, it's very good that our two rulers know it, get to know each other and both of them, because of course we, their character are known, are uh, very warm-hearted and uh, spontaneous people. The mutual visits also helped to establish a solid base of mutual understanding and cooperation between the two countries, which are keen to continue cooperation through continuous visits and contacts to enhance bilateral relations and discuss developments in the region and the world. This continued coordination provides a better atmosphere for the promotion of a strong partnership at the political, economic, social and cultural levels. I'm confident that this will be a, a, a new boost in our relations and I'm very confident also that the visible and symbolic initiatives that will be taken um, will be mentioned for the recall in the years to come. The visit of His Majesty the King to France is particularly important given the capacity of the two countries and their effective role in the course of regional and international events. The French Republic occupies an important space in the international arena and plays a significant role in various international issues. In view of its strategic position in the Arabian Gulf and its permanent position in supporting the security and stability of the region, Bahrain also plays a significant role. In light of this international status enjoyed by both nations, political links between the two countries have been steadily growing. 
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa yesterday received at his residence in Paris the French Minister of Economy and Finance, Bruno Le Maire, marking his visit to France. He discussed with the French Minister joint cooperation and the consolidation of promising economic, financial, banking and investment opportunities that support vital sectors and contribute to their development. His Majesty the King hailed the deep-rooted relations binding Bahrain and France in all fields, hailing the keenness of the leaderships in both countries to bolster joint ties. He looked forward to boosting the volume of joint cooperation and developing financial investment and economic ties, stressing the importance of benefiting from expertise, innovation and practices to serve shared goals and interests. He hailed the economic and industrial strides that bolstered the global standing of France, hailing French banking and financial institutions that are based in Bahrain for their contribution to the national economy. His Majesty the King and the French Minister exchanged views about the key economic and financial issues of interest to both countries, focusing on global economic outlook. The French Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, hailing his keenness on strengthening joint economic and financial cooperation and bolstering solid partnership. In light of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visit to France, a delegation of Bahraini business people have accompanied His Majesty in order to sign a number of agreements and memorandum of understanding with French companies and institutions which amount to 2 billion US dollars. The new agreements will take the aggregate worth of Bahraini French trade to 4.63 billion US dollars, which will deepen the bilateral economic relations and increase investment across the two countries. The Minister of Commerce, Trade and Tourism, Zaid bin Rashid Al Zayani, opened the business conference in which around 100 Bahraini and French business people participated with the objective of discussing investment and trade opportunities and developing the economic bilateral ties. The President of the French Chamber of Commerce, Frédéric Sanché, gave a statement in which he praised the bilateral ties in all aspects, especially on the economic and commercial levels. Sanche praised the efforts that the representative of the public and private sectors in Bahrain have made to bring the bilateral relations to its current state of development. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdel Hussein bin Ali Mirza, then gave a presentation on renewable energy projects and discussed opportunities for cooperation in this field. The CEO of the Economic Development Board also discussed the investment opportunities that are available to French investors, as well as the business-friendly environment that Bahrain enjoys. The visit of His Majesty the King to the French Republic has led to a qualitative boost in the relations between Bahrain and France in the field of investment cooperation in various economic levels. Through meetings with senior officials in the public and private sectors of the French Republic, Bahrain represents an ideal gateway to the Gulf region, an open business environment and a competitive advantage. We have a strong economic presence and our um, economic relationships are dynamic, I have to say in terms of figures, uh, to the benefit of France. We do export in Bahrain mainly uh, chemical and pharmaceuticals, and uh, we do import from Bahrain mainly, but not only, refined uh, oil products, obviously. We are quite well represented in terms of business in Bahrain. Not less than 40 businesses are settled permanently here. The first of them, well known to all Bahraini, is BNP Paribas, the big French bank, one of the first worldwide banks. Uh, it was settled in 75, uh, namely very shortly after Bahrain's independence and it's never left since then. It accompanies faithfully the destiny of Bahrain. But I would like also to mention other business, French business like uh, um, NG, Aegis, AREP, Vinci Energy, FIV, ADP, Veolia, and you name them. Uh, we are quite present in a number of, uh, of uh, key sectors like uh, airport um, extension, like uh, desalinization of water and energy uh, production, uh, like, of course, a contribution to the construction of uh, Line 6 of uh, your national and so renowned ALBA uh, enterprise. 
So these are pride. Uh, m motives and uh, subjects for pride because we have the feeling that we accompany uh, Bahrain on the path of its economic development and uh, reconversion. Bahrain aims to take advantage of all the investment opportunities that will be created by this visit in order to attract more French investment to the kingdom, all the while creating jobs in the local market and ensuring the implementation of several joint economic projects between the two sides. We want all obviously to be more present we are aiming at uh, contributing to the next tenders that will be launched, but who does not? Uh, what I can say is that France has the capacity to provide the best and uh, to accompany at its at it best level the ambitions, the legitimate ambitions of development of Bahrain within its vision 2030 and through particularly some of the great projects that uh, you are setting up like uh, the causeway or, or the LRT, not to mention others. Let me just also recall that uh, we are providing a big bunch of Airbus to the national uh, air company, which we are very proud of because it's a demonstration of trust and we want to be worth this trust. The Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi visited the Audiovisual Media Institute in the French capital Paris as part of His Majesty the King's visit to France. The minister confirmed the ministry's keenness to proceed in its projects and plans to develop the media and communication sector and boost its efficiency at the local and regional levels. The minister met with the institute's officials who briefed him about the institute's history and the key areas of its progress in the audiovisual field. He also viewed the latest advanced technologies in the field, as well as the theoretical and practical programs offered by the Institute to partners and trainees from around the world. The Minister praised the fruitful cooperation between the Information Ministry and the French Audiovisual Media Institute that culminated in the launch of a project training program benefiting more than 30 Bahrainis sent to France to receive a one-month intensive training on the compilation of news reports, acoustics, lighting techniques, uh, interviews and narrative, and much more. The minister expressed aspiration to further the cooperation with the institute to boost the capabilities of national cadres in various media careers. The minister explored aspects of cooperation between the ministry and the institute to increase partnership in light of a memorandum of understanding soon to be signed between the two sides on the sidelines of the visit of His Majesty to the Republic. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Qaraybiya Palace a number of royal family members and officials where he discussed with them a number of national affairs. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the Bahraini people's loyalty to their country and its leadership, which is reflected in the kingdom's history and the honorable national record. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister stressed that Bahraini people refuse any interference with their homeland. He also stressed that Bahrain's achievements has succeeded in gaining the world's respect thanks to the progress it has achieved and development that has affected various fields, expressing pride in the national cadres. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Qaraybiya Palace today a number of Shura Council members. His Royal Highness the Premier discussed with them a number of issues related to developing the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities and a number of national affairs. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of the cooperation between the government and the parliament to serve national interest, adding that common opinion should be the dominant feature of the relationship between the executive and legislative authorities. 
He stressed that the National Action March requires the cooperation of all to maintain the kingdom's achievements and gains. His Royal Highness praised the important role of the Council in enhancing the development march in Bahrain through a distinguished elite of national talents with experience in various fields. The Prime Minister affirmed the government's keenness to reinforce cooperation with the Legislative Authority for its importance in achieving coordination and consultation regarding issues concerning the country and its citizens. His Royal Highness noted the interest of the Legislative Authority's members to strengthen cooperation to achieve the desired goals. His Royal Highness expressed pleasure in meeting with the Shura Council members and pride in their national role. He noted that the work of the Executive and Legislative Authority contributes to the developing of the country and achieving the citizens' aspirations. He expressed keenness that the relationship between the two authorities should be based on understanding and joint coordination. The Premier expressed appreciation for the members for discussing all issues in the Council, which reflects their experience in the wide range of disciplines. His Royal Highness added that, with the support of His Majesty the King, Bahrain has been able to take advanced steps in establishing the foundations of the rule of law and institutions, and has a pioneering democratic experience that has won the respect and appreciation of the world. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister stressed that maintaining the security and stability of the country continuing the development march and improving the living conditions of citizens is a joint responsibility between all authorities. For their part, Shura Council members expressed their appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his interest in strengthening cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, which had a significant impact in achieving many of the aspirations of the citizens. They also hailed His Royal Highness's keenness to enhance communication with the Legislative Authority, which reflects His Royal Highness's appreciation of its role in serving the national action. The Commander-in-Chief of Bahrain Defense Force BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa patronized the medal awarding ceremony which were granted to a number of BDF senior officials by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of the Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuaimi. The Commander-in-Chief presented a number of senior officials with Bahrain's first and second class medals. The ceremony was also attended by the Director of the BDF General Command Headquarters, Major General Hassan and Mohammed Saad, Assistant Chief of Staff for Logistics and Catering, Naval Major General Yusuf Ahmed Malallah, Assistant Chief of Staff for Human Resources, Major General Sheikh Ali bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and Senior BDF officials. شرفني أن أنقل لكم تحيات سيدي صاحب الجلالة وتبركاته للأخوان المكرمين بالذات اليوم في حصولهم على وسام البحرين من الدرجتين الأولى والثانية كما اسمحوا لي أن أتقدم بالشكر لجلالة على هذا التكريم لكم وأنتم تستحقون هذا التكريم حصلت عليه عند دارة وكفاءة فهنيكم على هذا الشيء نتمنى دائما ان شاء الله لاخواننا الباقيين بعد ان شاء الله بهذا المجال انهم يلحقهم الدور ايضا اليوم قوه الدفاع ولله الحمد تخطو خطوات كبيره وتكريم القاده والمميزين والمستحقين ما هو الا دليل على الانجازات الكثيره اللي حقها قوة الدفاع وهذا بفضلكم أنتم أيضا وأعمالكم وأنا أيضا أهنيكم وأشكركم على ما تقومون به وإن شاء الله بعد أخواننا الباقيين بعد إن شاء الله يلحقهم الدور في هذا المجال ضباط قوة الدفاع وقادتها عن جزء كثير من الأعمال 
وانا بعد ما ابغى انسى الدور الكبير اللي يقومون فيه ضباطنا وافرادنا في على الحدود الجنوبيه للمملكه العربيه السعوديه وفي اليمن في جميع الظروف هم الان دخلوا سنتهم الخامسه فندعو من الله سبحانه وتعالى ان ينصرهم ويوفقهم ان شاء الله وهذه طبعا باهتماماتهم واعمالهم استطاعوا ان يحققون الكثير ولله الحمد سمعتهم اليوم في المنطقه هذه اللي هم يعملون فيها نشهد لهم في اعمالهم الجيده كذلك اكرر لكم الشكر والتقدير على متابعتهم بقية الأمور إن شاء الله بشركم في قوة الدفاع إحنا عندنا برامج إن شاء الله ماشيين فيها لرفع قدراتنا القتالية في جميع المجالات تقريبا أرجو أن الله يوفقنا وياكم أيضا في النجاح في هذه البرامج مشكورين وموفقين إن شاء الله The Representatives Council held its weekly meeting today, chaired by its Speaker Fawzia bin Abdullah Zainal. The Council approved Decree by Law 57 of 2018, amending a number of provisions of Decree by Law 4 of 2001 on banning and combating money laundering and funding terrorism. The Council also approved a law that replaces Article 1 of Decree by Law 2 of 2001 on non bahrainis proprietorship of constructed real estates and lands. The Council approved a draft law amending Article 5 of Law 27 of 2005 on education, Bahrain's joining of the Convention on International Liability for Damage Caused by Space Objects was approved. The Council also ratified the agreement of the Government of Bahrain and the Government of Saudi Arabia in the field of air transport services. His Highness the Southern Governor Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa inaugurated the Zalaq Hall in the presence of the Director General of the Southern Municipality and a number of deputies of the Parliamentary and Municipal Councils in the region, as well as representatives of the Southern Governorate Police Directorate and a number of officials and residents in the region. The Southern Governor stated that the efforts of the Southern Governorate to implement leading projects are part of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, with the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He also noted that the social project is a developmental achievement that is a result of the initiatives and development projects and services adopted by the Southern Governorate, adding that he spares no effort to serve the country and the citizens. His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali viewed an engineering presentation of the Zalaq Hall construction stages and inspected all the services and facilities that were hailed by the people and citizens. The attendees expressed thanks for His Highness's inauguration of the pioneering social project, which will be beneficial for the people of Zalaq in particular and the Southern Governorate in general. They also thanked His Highness for his continuous efforts to follow up and implement projects that benefit all members and segments of society. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa delegated the Chief of Public Security Major General Tariq bin Hassan Al Hassan to attend a graduation ceremony of the 34th Joint Commandos. The Chief of Public Security hailed the support of the Minister of Interior and his directives in the police training field and the continuous work on developing the capabilities of security officers officers and using modern technology and equipment to increase readiness and face various security challenges. He added that the level of current sessions graduates reflects the advanced level of training and the utilization of advanced training methods to achieve a professional security level that is capable of overcoming all challenges. The Chief of Public Security congratulated the graduates on passing this stage, hailing the outstanding performance they delivered during the graduation ceremony. For his part, the acting chief of the Special Security Force delivered a speech in which he noted that the main goal of the training operation is increasing the competency of security officers and preparing them optimally to perform their duties in all circumstances. He expressed thanks and appreciation for the support of the Special Security Force receiving from Chief of Public Security. Major General Al Hassan honored the top achievers, wishing all the graduates success.
The critical importance of multi-cloud and other network security technologies in high-risk cyber environment was highlighted today at a symposium held by global IT and networking leader Cisco in collaboration with Al Muayyad Computers, the flagship company of Al Muayyad International Group at the Ritz-Carlton, Bahrain. More in this report. As the world becomes more tech-savvy, businesses need to keep pace to ensure that their products and services are as safe as possible, and that means second-best security is no longer an option. A symposium held today by global IT and networking leader Cisco, in collaboration with Al Muayyad Computers, the flagship company of Al Muayyad International Group, highlighted the critical importance of multi-cloud and other network security technologies in today's high-risk cyber environment. Having multiple clouds is rapidly becoming the next big thing. This software simplifies a complicated process by bringing together networking, security, analytics and management across business environments to help better connect, protect and consume clouds in a multi-cloud world. It's happening very fast. Okay, If you look five years back, when we were talking about the cloud, we were talking about basically a few providers. But now everything has changed. The landscape has changed itself. So you can see we have multiple multi-cloud providers who offer a key value proposition to an enterprise. What's very important basically to the Bahraini business is to look how they can simplify this complexity. And with Cisco, we are very confident with our multi-cloud solution that we can help them overcome this, manage it more easily, and make sure they offer the same service, the same security, and the same analytics everywhere, whether on the private, on the public, or on a hybrid cloud. The event comes in the wake of a global embrace of multi-cloud strategies by leading tech brands such as Dell and government organizations such as the Pentagon as they aim to build a highly secure enterprise-wide cloud environment capable of supporting their rapid collection, movement, and analysis of information important event at a very important time as we celebrate the 30th birthday of the internet we believe cloud plays a very critical role in the strategy of businesses and therefore we provide a comprehensive strategy and solution with the ability to execute with real time for all sectors of businesses. The strategy that we provide takes a top-down approach where we look at the business requirement, business priorities, and we deliver solutions that are end-to-end -end capable of delivering on those business outcomes and business priority. A strategy that provides the capability on the network side to connect, the capability on the end-to-end -end security, and the capability to provide management solution for all of full automation. The idea is to reduce cost, maximize efficiency, and reduce risks on businesses. Several Cisco specialists and consultants delivered presentations at the event, which highlighted the uses of the Cisco multi-cloud portfolio and the advantages that multi-cloud software offers businesses. In attendance were representatives from the government, banking, telecommunications and education sectors. We are like one of the first companies in the region to have understood that the world is changing, moving towards cloud. And we invested well in advance in terms of our preparation, particularly in the context of multi-cloud, because we believe that you know first we should be ready, you know ourselves to offer the best to our customers. At the same time, you know we believe that it's our responsibility to offer the best suited options. That is where we are in terms of offering multi-cloud options. In addition to enhanced security, multi-cloud software also bolsters innovation levels for businesses because it helps them reduce dependence on a single vendor and roll out services at a rapid pace. Multi-cloud software is an accessory component to encourage an innovation culture within Bahrain businesses.